Darren, I asked Kalani about this, and I've been kind of curious about the impact that analytics and tendencies and, and all those numbers that are broken down. I know a lot of guys put a lot of a stock into those. I was wondering what you do as a quarterback. How much do you look at, at those analytics and, and those numbers to, to try and improve your game? Yeah, we talk about it a lot. We talk about it in meetings. We watch film when we game plan, um, certain down and distance plays. Um, and then obviously on the field, we have a great way of, of uh, communicating about those things. So I'm aware of, of what the book is telling us at the time. Um, and so it's really, it's been a big part of, of our offense um, and really our, our whole, you know, three phases of the game for three years now and all the success that we've had recently. And so I've really taken that upon myself, you know, meetings and talking to coaches and learn about those, um, those analytics and how they, you know, can help us. Is that something you want to see more, less? Is, is it about right in your opinion? I'm just curious because it, it's one of those things you can break down everything. So yeah. I'm just wondering how much you like it. Yeah, just what we're doing. I mean, we go by the book. Um, we, we, we do it as it tells us to because you know, there's been a lot of time spent in researching, you know, the uh, the impacts of it. And oftentimes it's, it's gone our way over the last couple of years. There's times it doesn't. But, you know, even with numbers, you're still human beings on the field and you got to go play and you got to make it work. So I'm confident, you know, in, in the book and I'm confident where our coaches, you know, make their decisions about, um, you know, what to do in those situations. Kevin and then Mitch. Jaron, um, just given the last month, uh, is this the toughest leadership challenge that you've had in your career um, at BYU or really just, just in general? Um, not a challenge, uh, opportunity though. Um, you know, finding, finding ways to keep people positive, keep yourself positive really. You know, as, you know, as a leader, a lot of times you can take stuff on yourself. Um, you can allow a lot of stuff to become burdensome. So for me personally, to stay positive and then just to, to find ways to look outward, see the guys that need need to be re reached out to, see the guys that need more belief in themselves, um, to, to kind of strike that um, belief within them. Um, and in return, it kind of does the same for me. So I want to say it's a challenge for, for any of our leaders. Um, I'd say it's a great opportunity, though, for coaches and, and the leaders and, and all the players, really, to, to rally around each other and not worry about anything going on around us right now, but just focus on each other and, and just you know making the most out of the situation that we can. Have you guys Jared, had, sorry, Mitch. Go ahead, Kevin. Have you guys had any player-led meetings um, this weekend on Saturday or anything like that after after um, the loss? No, no meetings yet. Gave guys a day off, recover from the game. You know, spend time with families, watch the film by yourselves. Just kind of let it all soak in. Um, but you know, every Monday we do. We meet together often throughout the season as leaders, as you know, players with coaches. Um, you know, kind of all of the above. So. Again, not not trying to make too big of a deal out of it. We just got to find something else to spark us. You know, there's there's no there's no meeting, there's no speech that can that can get you out of the situation that we're in right now. And we've learned that after a couple of weeks. So we've just got to we got to find a way just to get through this. Jaron, is the uh, prospects or the potential of a bowl game enough to ignite that spark? You think for the team is is that enough motivation for this group to get it on track? I mean, it absolutely can be. Um, you know, we haven't had our meeting yet. We haven't really talked about that. You know, as you wind down and you get closer to the end of the season, that definitely starts to, you know, be in the, peep, in the back of your mind. Um, but for us right now, we still just got to focus on Boise State this, this up and coming week. But, you know, anybody who's played in bowl games, who's been a part of that experience, it's fun. It's, it's a good time. And, and, you know, college football and players, we're lucky enough to have, you know, these, these boards that represent different bowl games to, to give us another game and to give us those opportunities to go somewhere around the country and have a good time and play football. So, I mean, from, from my standpoint, you know, being to a bowl game before, it's fun. And, and I would love to be a part of that. And that's always the goal. But, but right now, you know, we just got to go take care of business at Boise, and, and that really will take care of all that for us. And then wanted to ask, is there a, a common theme that's, that's causing the issues on third or, or fourth down, especially uh, that you think are, are fixable moving forward? We got to be better than the guys across from us. Um, you know, every game, it's, it's a little different situation. You know, when you're not converting third downs, you're not converting fourth downs. It's dependent upon the defense you're playing, um, the different play calls we have. And, and there hasn't really been a, a common theme for, for how we haven't been able to convert. But uh, every game kind of has its own reasons, whether you're not physical enough, whether we're not completing passes. It's all, it's all kind of been different. And so um, at the end of the day, it just comes down to, to understanding our responsibility better, having more urgency in those fourth downs, and, and just straining more to finish and, and just to will our way to it. You know, we just got to be better. Hey, go ahead. Yeah, Jaron, Boise's been one of the, I guess, 
constants on your schedule throughout the independent era for the BYU football program. What have you enjoyed about facing them in your time in, in Provo? Yeah, it's always an intense game. There's always history behind it. There's always grit on that field between both teams, and it's always just a, it's always a good game. It's a good atmosphere where, wherever you play, whether you're in Boise or you're here in Provo, and it's uh, it's it's always a challenge every year. You know, it's no different than you know playing Utah or even playing Utah State. Um, it's just a very similar feel. You know, so it'll be really fun to play out there in in Boise, their stadium. You know, their fans are very passionate. They always come out to support, and so it'll be a good challenge for us. We'll take last question from Jay. Jaron, as, as these injuries mount up uh, for your offensive weapons, uh, now we've just learned Cody Epps is, is done for the season. You haven't had Gunner much, and you know the story. Is that just wearing on you? How are you handling that personally? Because these are the guys you rely on to make the offense go. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we uh, you always pray for their health. Um, you want them to get back as soon as they can, and you like to have all your weapons out there at the same time. But the nature of football is it's a physical game. Um, not a lot of teams in the country go a whole season with all their guys on the field at the same time. That's the reality. So um, you can't really make excuses with that, and you can't you can't let that become a burden for anybody to try to carry more weight. But well, all you got to do is be the most prepared player you can. Um, you know, do year one eleventh because at the end of the day, there's ten other guys on the field. You know, they can they can make up for for what you lose when someone else is hurt. And so I, I got a lot of confidence in all of our guys, and and we've seen it all year. Everybody stepped up at certain points and made plays. So now it's a matter of how can we get everybody that's available to have the best game, you know, of their season at the same time. And I think that's that's what we've been lacking, and that's something that will really I think help us kind of find a spark again and, and get rolling like we know we can. Thanks so much, Jaren. Thank you. What's little Jada's costume? She's gonna be a little little cow tonight, so we'll be uh, we'll be some farmers. So we'll we'll see we'll see how that goes. That sounds like fun. Oh yes, it will be. Thank you guys. Have a good night. Thanks, have, a, have a good day. Sorry. Uh -uh.